I'm James from Bike Lock Wiki, and in this video, we're comparing the CT Lock Viking Silver to the ABUS 8900. Just before we review the destruction testing footage, I wanted to make it clear these trains are salt secure pedal cycle silver rated, meaning they're not designed for use with highly valuable bicycles or e bikes unless you're going to be nearby whilst your bike's locked up. If you ride an expensive bike or lock up in high risk areas, check out my review of the Viking Gold which is CT Lock's most secure train lock. To begin with, we'll review how these chains perform during destruction testing, and then later in the video, we'll also take a look at the features they offer and how practical they are to use. First, we have a basic drop test to simulate the wear and tear you can expect from either chain over time. Up first, the ABUS 8900 dropped five times from shoulder height, which is roughly 1.6 meters. As you can see, the plastic housing split open ever so slightly and the outer casing showed some light scratches, but no real damage here. Viking Silver up next, which uses a soft silicon casing rather than a plastic shell like the ABUS 8900. Now, apart from a small hole in the corner of the silicon casing, there was no other damage to report here and both locks locking mechanisms worked as normal afterwards. For hammer testing, I deliver 10 strong blows to all areas of the lock using a 1.8 kilo lump hammer and a steel anvil to prevent damage to the concrete floor of my workshop. As you can see, the plastic casing split off the 8900, exposing the mechanism housing beneath, which was dented. The lock was no longer functional and wouldn't open when I inserted the key, but if locked to your bike, it wouldn't have failed completely. The sleeve split in several locations and after removing it to check the chain, I found some light denting and noticed a crack the whole way through one of the welds in a link. Whilst this may suggest some issues with the hardening process, it's not a complete failure and your bike would still have been safely secured if locked up. Moving on to the Viking Silver, the silicon case got beaten up pretty badly, but there wasn't any visible damage to the mechanism housing underneath. To my surprise, when I inserted the key, the Viking still worked fine, which was shocking as I'd expected it to break like the 8900. The neoprene sheath split in multiple places and when removed, the links underneath did show some small signs of denting, but no cracks at the welds like the 8900. Now, I won't bore you for too long with high-speed steel hacksaw testing. Both of these locks are case and through hardened, so as you can see here, they both resisted my HSS hacksaw blade for over a minute each and hardly showed a mark of damage, despite using a fresh blade for either lock. On both attempts, the blades were blunted and I gave up after little to no progress was made. Several viewers have requested a carbide hacksaw blade test, so I did get hold of one, and you can view how effective this was alongside angle grinder and a cylinder security test in part two of this destruction testing. 18 inch bolt cutters are portable and easily concealed on the street, making them an excellent choice for opportunist bike thieves. The pair I used weren't brand new, but as you can imagine, thieves are unlikely to be using brand new tools on the street. As I clamped the cutters down, the jaws bent around the link, unable to make a cut. Unfortunately, I didn't have a replacement pair of 18 inch bolt cutters in the workshop, but I still tried to crop the 8900 with the damaged cutters to see if they'd make any damage to the train. Unsurprisingly, they didn't. Only very light marking to the 8900's train link and the bolt cutters are now totally warped out of shape so I'll need to get some new ones for my next review. Now 42 inch bolt cutters are the largest on the market and as you can see from their size they're virtually impossible for thieves to conceal when on the street so it's highly unlikely that you'd find somebody walking around with a pair of these. However I was keen to see how both trains performed when put to the test. Remember, these chains are both designed to be lightweight and suitable for use on the move, while still providing enough security for use in low to medium risk areas, such as towns and other rural areas. If you need something suitable for higher risk areas or more expensive bikes, then watch my review of the Viking Gold. First up, the Viking Silver, which uses 6.95 mm thick hardened steel links. These were too thin to challenge the 42 inch bolt cutters and cut fairly easily. Two cuts are required to break each link and I was able to crop the chain again with little effort. 
As an additional extra later in the video, I'll show you a simple trick you can use to make it considerably harder for a thief to crop your bike train, so stay tuned. Next, the 8900, which uses thicker 8.95mm links. Upon my first crop attempt, I noticed the cropper blades were splaying slightly and I inspected the drawers to find that they were slightly bent. Upon inspection, whilst there wasn't a clean cut, the 8900's link had cracked underneath the pressure of the drawers. Again, this could suggest that there are issues with the hardening process of the 8900. Without another pair of 42 inch cutters available, I carried on and attempted to crop the 8900's link, but where the blades were now so misaligned, they were no use and despite several attempts, I couldn't cut or crack the chain. Interesting results, but I think it's fair to say that the 8900's thicker links are more resistant to bulk cutters, whilst the Viking provides increased portability and a respectable level of security for such a lightweight chain. So as not to drag this video out for those looking for a shorter review, I made a part two of destruction testing where you can see how both of these trains performed against an angle grinder, a carbide hacksaw blade, and a cylinder security test with a HSS drill. If you are interested in watching this, click the link shown here, or if you'd rather explore some of the features either of these trains offer first, I'll leave a link to part two at the end of the video. With destruction testing finished, let's take a look at how practical either of these locks are to use and some of the features that they utilize. Now the Viking Silver that I have here is the 110 centimeter version, which weighs 1.58 kilos compared to the a bus 8900 which is 85 centimeters long and weighs 2.06 kilos as you may have noticed already there are different lengths available of either of these locks which i'll leave information about down in the description below alongside the imperial measurements if that's what you're used to now the main reason for the difference in weight between these two locks is that the spiking silver's links are 6.95 millimeters thick whereas the ABUS 8900s measure in at 8.95, so two millimeters thicker. This is very impressive when you consider the Viking silver links didn't crack or damage during hammer testing like the 8900s, when you bear in mind that they're two millimeters thinner overall. The length of chain you decide upon is ultimately going to depend on your individual locking situation. The longer chains are more suitable for securing multiple bikes or for locking to larger immovable objects, whereas the shorter chains provide increased portability and are more suitable for locking one individual bike. Moving on to keys and cylinders, the Viking Silver is supplied with three keys which operate CT locks go to slider cylinder. The 8900 is supplied with two keys which operate the 8000's wafer cylinder. I'd say overall that the Viking slider cylinder will provide slightly better resistance to picking attempts, but either way, it's highly unlikely that a thief is going to be using lock picks as their weapon of choice on the street. The locking mechanisms these locks use are slightly different to operate. The CT Lock Viking uses magnetic locking, which encourages the end link of the chain into place, allowing you to quickly and conveniently secure your bike, whilst also preventing the lock from flopping open. The 8900 uses a pin and three ball bearings. All that's needed to operate it is a gentle push or pull, which sets the pin in place, making the lock very smooth and efficient to use, also preventing the lock from flopping open unwantedly. Ultimately, during my last three weeks of testing, I haven't experienced any issues with either locking mechanism, showing that they're both very reliable and are likely to stand the test of time. As you can see here, both locks feature keyhole covers which prevent dirt and debris from entering the locking mechanism, reducing the maintenance the locking cylinder demands over time. However, I do prefer the 8900's keyhole cover as it's made of metal and doesn't wear out as easily over time like the CT Lock's plastic variant. During use, in the unlikely event that either of these locks did seize up on you, all that's required is a quick squirt of a lock friendly lubricant like ABUS's PS88. With the cylinder facing down, this will loosen up any dirt and grime within the mechanism, helping to remove it from inside. Taking a closer look at the mechanism housing either of these locks use, both housings are made from hardened steel, but we did see some differing results during destruction testing. 
The Viking Silver's mechanism housing measures 2.75 mm thick and provided great protection during destruction testing, protecting the cylinder, which worked as normal afterwards. On the other hand, the Abus 8000's housing is roughly 2.1 mm thick, and whilst it didn't completely fail, the internal locking mechanism did jam close after several heavy hammer blows. Both locks feature a durable protective sleeve. Now the Vikings is made from neoprene and is nicely padded, whereas the 8900's is made from a thinner synthetic material. These are both designed to prevent scratches and damage to the frame of your bike whilst locking up. After experiencing the neoprene sleeve detaching when I reviewed the CT Lock Viking Gold, I'm glad to see that CT Lock have since addressed this issue with the sleeve now held firmly in place by wires and a cable tie. It's good to see brands taking user feedback seriously and ultimately wanting to improve the quality of their products. Now the best way to secure your bike with either of these locks or any lock in general is to keep the lock as high away from the ground as possible when locking up. This renders attacks using hammers useless and the higher away from the ground your lock is the harder it will be to target or crop with a pair of bolt cutters and many other tools. If possible, use a multi-storey bike rack when locking up in general and prioritise securing your most expensive components and consider using a secondary lock or a security cable to secure additional components. When comparing the environmental sustainability of either of these companies, ABUS are further ahead and doing more to lessen their impact on the environment than CT Lock. ABUS use and currently use less plastic in their packaging than CT Lock and have complete control over their own factories, so have begun to use solar energy to supply up to 50% of their total energy mix. Impressive from ABUS here, but CT Lock need to be doing more. All in all, it's a difficult choice to choose between either of these locks. Both showcase strengths and weaknesses during destruction testing. The 8900's chunkier links defeated my 42 inch bolt cutters that the Vikings had succumbed to, but the 8900's link also cracked during hammer testing, whereas the Vikings thinner links took minimal damage and make it the much more portable lock. Both locks have impressed me here, but I'd say that if you're looking for a lightweight chain to take with you on rides for short stops, go for the Viking, but if you'd rather a slightly chunkier chain that provides better resistance for cropping, then the ABUS 8900 is your better option. If you want to view the most recent price for either of these locks, I've left links down in the video description below. These are affiliate links, so I may earn a small commission if you decide to purchase, but you won't pay any more than you would normally. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.